welcome back to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva. <laughs> and y'all already know, I'm just a sister who has a lot to talk about. And from week to week, y'all already know I'm putting your D to what I got to talk about, okay? You know, I'm putting your D to the T. <laughs> yeah. So what's been going on with your sister? Matter of fact, before I even get into that, right, I want to remind y'all, Thank you if you've already subscribed to the channel. I appreciate you helping your sister reach her goal. But if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button at the end of the bottom of this video. Make that button turn red that says subscribe and then hit the bell button so that you get notified every time I drop a new video and help your sister on the road to 200 subscribers. Now, what's been going on with your sister? Listen, listen. I'm going to bring the energy down just for a second, just for a second, because I really want to have a very transparent moment with y'all. I don't think I've had much of a transparent moment on this platform with you all since I started it. So it's really important for me to share the realness of what I'm going through. A lot of people in my position who have platforms and, you know, are influencers or things of that nature don't really share the downsides of what's going on in their, in their lives. Um, a lot of the times we get caught up with just kind of, you know, looking good for the camera, making everything sound nice that we, you know, just kind of forget to be real people and connect with y'all on a real level. So this week, I want to have a transparency moment with y'all because it's just been a lot going on in your sister's life, right? Um, I, I posted a status the other day that said the devil trying to do his big one, but God been doing his bigger one, okay? Listen, shout out to big old, big G-O-D. You know, shout, shout out to big G-O-D. Listen, the devil, he tries, he tries. But he definitely never succeeds. And we're not going to give him no more time than what he's supposed to have. And no much, no more acknowledgement that he's supposed to have. Because at the end of the day, God gets all the glory in every situation. Um, and we got to learn how to be content in every circumstance. And so I said that to say uh, that, you know, this week has been a really trying week for your sister. Uh, I think I've been transparent enough for you all to know that, you know, your sister is in transition at the moment. Um, I've been on this journey for the last six months. You know, I got laid off from my job six months ago. And basically, it's been bet on me season ever since then. Um, I think that, you know, God opened up this time for me to be able to explore and really figure out what it is that I want to do with this next phase of my life. Um, and most importantly, what's going to make me happy? Because I think up until this point, I lived a lot for other people. What other people told me that I should be doing, um, especially, you know, being that I have two degrees and, you know, what I should be doing to secure a future or what I should be doing based off of what it is that they think I should be doing. Not necessarily based off of my skill set, not necessarily based off of the talents that I have, not, be not based off of just my general happiness. And one of the things, if you have not learned already, that people are going to tell you what they think that you should do. But they rarely ever would take their own advice. If the shoe was on the other foot, these same people that tell you to do a certain thing probably would do something totally different. So you got to be careful when you start listening to people and taking the advice of people because they only can think from their capacity. See, and I don't want to start preaching, but if it goes there, hey, that's where it's going. The thing about it is people, not the vision is not for everybody. Let's just start there. The vision is not for everybody. You may be a person who just sees things in a, a, a crazy different way. And that's okay. Not everybody has vision. Not everybody sees your end goal the way you see your end goal. Because at the end of the day, God is talking directly to you. He's not talking to everybody else about you. 
Now, he may be using people strategically in there somewhere to give you a message or open your eyes to something or whatever the case may be. So don't be bullheaded. You know, don't be bullheaded because God is going to still send vessels to help you along your journey. But at the same time, don't let people talk to you based off of the place that they're fearful. See, a lot of people will talk to you and downplay you and tell you not to do something because they don't believe that they can do it. So obviously, because they can't do it, you can't do it. So at the end of the day, definitely take what people tell you with a grain of salt. Because like I said, up until now, I've lived a life where I I was a people pleaser. I wanted to make everybody else around me happy. You know, I wanted to do what it was that, you know, my parents told me to do and follow the path that they told me was successful. And I thank my parents for the roles that they play in my life, because at the end of the day, you know, the things that they've said, the opportunities that they have allowed me to walk through because of you know, different things that they've done in their lives. I'm forever grateful for the things that my parents have sacrificed for me. And so I just want to say thank you to them quickly because they, they have pushed me in various different ways. And so I want to say thank you to my parents, but at the same time, I also want to say that your parents only know what they know. And your parents, it's their responsibility to tell you what they think is best. And what they think is best may be great advice. But once we become adults, we got to understand that we live our lives for ourselves. And ultimately, every decision and every action that we take only affect us. Our parents aren't going to be here forever. Our parents aren't always going to be able to make decisions for us because it limits us the more that we listen to other people, not just our parents. It could be our friends. It could be whoever. People that are closest to us have the tendency to limit us and what they think that we can do. Now, some of us are lucky. Some of us have a great support system where they pour into us and tell us, oh, you're amazing. You can do great things. I see this for you. I push it forward and I'm going to hook this up for you and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And some people don't have that type of support. It just is what it is. And so you got to push past the naysay and really tap into your own knowledge and tap into that, that, that voice inside of you. Because nine times out of 10, that's God telling you to do something. And it may not look popular to everybody around you. And, you know, I I may get a little emotional on this part because this really is my testimony. When I tell you that you all get to see the side of me that's happy all the time, you all get to see the side of me that's just this strong black woman. Y'all don't ever get to see me when I'm having these moments where I don't feel like I measure up to what it is that I know that God has put on my life. Um, Y'all don't get to see me when I'm dealing with insecurities and things where I have to stop those voices in my head from telling me that I'm something that I know that I'm not. Y'all don't see me when I have to encourage myself every day, constantly and constantly and constantly, because if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Y'all don't get to see those weak moments. So I really wanted to take a moment to just kind of like, be open with y'all and let y'all see this side of me because y'all don't get to see it often. You know, I know, I know I'm a lot of things. I know I'm funny. I know I'm educated. I know I'm all these things, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I am strong, but I have my weak moments just like everybody else. And so I wanted to make sure that I took this time to really let y'all know, like this six months has not been easy. This six months has stretched me in so many different ways. When I tell you, like, trusting in God is not easy. It's one thing for me to sit here and say, trust in God, trust in God. He knows what's best for you. Trust in God, trust in God, because all things work for your good. We all hear it. And it's one thing for me to tell you that, but it's another thing for me to tell you that, yes, trust in God, but it won't be easy. It's not going to always be easy. Trust in God even when you don't see it because you won't always see it. Sometimes God will tell you something and you'll be like, okay, God, I trust you. And then two days later, you have the worst day of your life. And that's kind of what happened to me this week. 
where I was so like, yeah, I'm trusting in God. You know, I went through this six months. I did everything he asked me to do. I was where I was supposed to be. I talked to the people that I was supposed to talk to. I bet on myself. I went out here and put my money where my mouth was at this week. And literally, we think that because God told us to do something, that something is going to happen immediately. And not to say that it can't because God can do anything at any moment. No matter how quick, how slow, it's all God's timing. So it can happen quickly. But sometimes it doesn't. And when those things don't happen quickly and it's seemingly shifting and now we're having a bad moment, it's like, oh, oh, come on now, God. Like, now I'm feeling hopeless. Now I'm feeling down and out. How can what you say, how can what you said is going to happen, happen when this is looking like this? And so I went through these six months where I'm just living my best life, living my best life. (laughs) I ain't going back and forth with these ninjas. (laughs) No, but seriously, listen, living my best life for the last six months, right? Enjoying my life, doing things that I put on my vision board two years ago because I never had time to do it, you know, giving my time and giving my efforts and talents to a company who dropped me when, when things got heavy. And so I never was true to myself and did the things that I put on my vision board. So now I have this time where I'm like, okay, God, I see what you're doing. You're giving me time to figure it out. And I'm thankful for that. And so now I'm doing so many things that I said I would do, but never got a chance to do. And so, you know, I'm doing these things on my vision board. I'm being these places. I'm doing these things. I'm showing up. I'm pushing through the stress and I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the end of this season of my life. And now it's looking like, okay, God, (laughs) okay, the well is running dry. What's going on here? (laughs) And um, you start to think like, wow, okay. um, I thought I would have had some type of revelation by now, but I'm still not really clear on what's going on here. But yet you still have to trust in God because God can, like I said, he could do anything in an instance. And so here I am at the end of this season of my life, and now I'm getting stressed. Now I'm getting muscle spasms again. Now I'm having anxiety attacks again. Now I'm having all these symptoms that I had when I was miserable at my job. And the Lord was like, girl, you better not. You better not. For the last six months, have I not sustained you? Have I not made sure that your rent was paid? Have I not made sure you had food in your refrigerator? Have I not made sure that you had new clothes in your closet? Have I not made sure that you could travel and do the things that you could do? Have I not sustained you? So don't you go ahead and get to the end of what it's looking like, the end of this season, and start freaking out. And now you start putting your hands back on the wheel and not allowing me to be who I am. And so I'm like, okay, God, I got you. I got you. Listen, my well ain't run dry. I'm still here and I still have everything that I need. So I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on doing what it is that you told me to do. I had the worst day this week, the worst day this week. And it's something, it's always something that's so small. You know, adulthood is real ghetto. It only take one thing and it's normally your car. (laughs) <laughs> it's normally the car the car is always the thing that just takes you if you're here it always takes you right over the edge and so my inspection look listen jesus turned water into wine so i'm gonna drink it but it's always the car i've been my inspection was up in august as you can tell we're well into September and sis still don't got no stickers. Um, so I'm on this journey of trying to figure out, okay, the shop that I was going to, they closed down. Now I got to find somewhere else to go. I find this place on Google. I'm like, all right, bet we about to get it done. It was several days in this week. I didn't went back to this place about four times, right? I'm waking up six o'clock in the morning to get it there to them or seven 30 in the morning. And then now I'm Ubering back. Well, the first day, now, the first day, because you know your sister be walking. The first day, I was like, you know what? It's a beautiful morning. Let me just go here. I'm going to bop it out, walk back home, and i just catch the Uber back up here later. But the Uber prices start adding up, adding up. Then now I got to get a new battery. The battery, $200. Then now I got to get my axle fixed. The axle, $600. And meanwhile, 
I haven't secured employment. <laughs> so from a place of unbelief, you know, I, I started off with all this hope, like, God, all right, I'm, I'm doing what you asked me to do. And then now things start to get a little hard. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm not bringing in no more income, but this money's still coming out my, 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 my pockets. What's going on here? And then it's to say, after going up there about three, four times, and they can't hook up this damn emissions machine and connect, now I'm having problems. Now the check engine light on, and it wasn't on when I took it to them. Now they messing with me and they, I don't know what they, I don't, I really don't know what their goal is, but now I'm just like, okay, what is going on here? What is going on here? This one thing is just eating me up. And so I was just having a really bad week when I'm thinking I'm going to take this car back and all I got to do is plug. I did everything I was supposed to do. They supposed to plug it up to this machine. It's supposed to be a good to go type of situation. And it wasn't that. And so now I'm just like, okay. I'm I'm at my end with this. I really don't have no capacity for this. Um, I, I can't deal. And so I, I begin to get sad. I begin to feel overwhelmed. I begin to think like, God, like what is going on here? Like what is going on? Um, but then I have to keep reminding myself, like God is still God. Like God is still faithful. He's going to do what it is that he said he was going to do. And even in the midst of that, and even in the midst of me filling out for all these different positions and not getting them and the door is not open, sometimes when them doors don't open that you knocking at, you really got to sit down and be like, you know what? This door hasn't opened yet because God didn't want it to open yet. Because there's a reason why he has not allowed me to trap myself back into a nine to five situation because he has so much more for me. And I, 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 listen, I'm gonna wrap it up because I'm I'm, way, I'm I'm taking way more time today. But I just want to share this testimony with y'all because God is so good. Listen, He is so good. Things that you don't even ask for, God delivers on, right? So I'm I'm going back to me with this vision board. I wrote on this vision board about a year and a half or so ago. Several different things that I wanted to do. Now, as a filmmaker, one of the things that I wanted to do was be an extra on a set. So it was so crazy because now I'm having the worst week of my life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just burnt out. I'm tired. And all of a sudden, I I, lay, I come home. I take a nap. Try to get my attitude together. I wake up. I got an email in my box. And it says, you have been chosen for the casting of da 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 Okay, God, I see you. <laughs> and God did his big one really just that quick. Because let's think about this, right? If I were tied to a job by now, I would have never been able to, to be available to do that in the middle of a week, right? And so it was crazy because, like I said, now, those of you who watch my story on Instagram, I gave you all just a little tidbit, but here's the testimony. The testimony is this, right? I remember filling out for this casting situation. I saw it on Facebook. It was supposed to be a real simple scene down at the um, the stadium or whatever, um, at the baseball stadium down in York. I'm thinking I'm just going to be, you know, regular crowd in the, in the, the atmosphere just out at this ballpark. Right. I just, I just said, Hey, well, this is what I said I want to do. Let me go ahead and apply for it real quick. Put my name on it. Worst case scenario. I don't get picked for it. Totally forgot about it until I'm having the worst week in my life. Now I get this in my inbox. Right. And now I'm chosen not for that. Of which I thought I was applying for. But now I'm literally chosen for like, I'm not going to say a major role because I'm still, I was still in the background, like doing extra work. But now like y'all get to see me walk across the camera. Like y'all see me. Okay. Cause when this film come out, I'm like, ma, dad, that's me. Like you see my head. Listen, you see me on a copying machine. <laughs> and sis, listen, it's, it's the smallest things, right? Because like I said, I didn't expect that I was going to be seen in that capacity, right? So that's that's number one. Number one is now my mind is blown because now I'm on this major set. And now I'm like, I have this opportunity to, you know, just kind of network and be seen and just be in the environment and do the things that I want to do. Now, the second wow moment was, I'm like, okay, God. Okay, God. Look, you're doing your bigger one. Um, 
I don't know if y'all know who Kevin Nealon is, but I'm going to put him on the screen. I don't know how much I can talk about this, so I'm only going to say just a little bit. However, Kevin Nealon walks in, guys. Now, mind you, I've been watching this man on TV for years, okay? I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan, and he has been in several Adam Sandler films. So now I'm looking, like, when I walked on set and I see him, because I didn't automatically see, like, I saw him when he walked in, but I wasn't really sure of, like, how close I was going to be to him or anything like that. So I walk on set and I realize, okay, you're not just about to be sitting here. Like, you're about to be actually doing some things. <laughs> and um, I get to walk past Kevin Nealon. Like, I'm the, I'm the person that crosses past him as he's walking on um walking on camera. And it was just, I don't know, it was just an amazing moment where I'm just like, yo, I ain't get to say no words, but just being that close to somebody that I've seen on TV, like, for many years, it was just like, wow. Like, wow. Like, I lucked up. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm, I lucked up. I know what it was. It was God. I'm blessed to been able to be a part of a set with someone that big on my first set. Like most people don't luck up and get to see the celebrities, you know, the first time around. But I I'm so blessed that God put me in that space to be able to be around somebody such as him. Then this is the the biggest one. The biggest one is this. Not only am I not expecting to get called for this particular type of background setting. I'm assuming that when I sent my little headshot in, they probably looked and was like, oh, she looks very professional. She fits the role. Let's go ahead and just choose her. But now, as I'm thinking, God, my funds are dwindling. Things are really like, it's going fast. It's going real fast. Like more money coming out, but not enough money coming in. The Lord blessed me with an opportunity to be on this set and get paid as if I was a union actor. Okay? I'm not going to tell y'all how much because I don't know how much yet. However, I'm just going to say that when God say, hold out and trust in me and trust my timing. And I'm going to tell y'all the verse of the day today was on point because I was just like, yo, this is a reminder. This is a reminder. Listen, this is the testimony. Don't, don't miss it. Don't miss the jewel because this was the verse of the day today. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait for the Lord. And the key to that is in your waiting season. This is this is it right here. In your waiting season, be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. And as I'm saying that, I'm not just saying that to you. I'm saying that to myself right now. Be strong and be courageous. Because in your waiting season is when God is going to take something and he's going to do something bigger, more abundantly and magnificent than you could ever imagine. So be strong and be courageous because that faith that looks crazy to everybody around you because they don't understand. They don't understand why you doing the things you're doing, why you moving the way you moving. They don't understand it. It's going to take courage. It's going to take for you to be courageous. It's going to take for you to have crazy faith and believe in God for something that you don't 100% see yet. So that's the message. That's the T. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all. Listen, the T is gone. The testimony is done. God is a provider. To God be all the glory. I'm going to say it right here, right now. But it's time, okay? It's time, y'all, to spill the tea. Now, make sure y'all got your pinkies up. Because it's time to spill the tea. All right, first things I want to spill the tea on. This week, man. It wasn't just a bad week for me. It was a bad week for Hollywood this week, okay? We had a lot of people in Hollywood who passed away this week. First things first, Rich Homie Kwan passed away. Rich Homie Kwan passed away from an alleged overdose. And I say alleged because 
personally, I think it was a conspiracy. But uh, this ain't conspiracy time. Uh, then we lost Fat Man Scoop. Fat Man Scoop. He uh, collapsed on stage. Then we lost one of the greats. One of the black greats. Mr. James Earl Jones. Like, let's have a moment of silence for Mr. James Earl Jones. Hmm. James Earl Jones, man, he's most notable. I don't even want to list off his resume because I don't want to be dis- disrespectful and miss something. But most popularly known for Darth Vader and, and Star Wars. Most popularly known for Mufasa and Lion King. Most perf- per- most known for coming to America. Most known for so many different roles. I mean... This man is one of the greatest entertainers, period. And we lost a legend, but he lived a full life. He lived a full life. He passed away at the age of 93. Um, and they said that was due to complications with diabetes. Um, so God rest his soul. Then we lost Frankie Beverly. Now, a lot of y'all of the community may not know who Frankie Beverly is, but listen, before I let go... Okay, every black person know that. Everybody knows Frankie Beverly. Frankie Beverly then gave us some jams over the years. Um, and so definitely a legend in the black community and definitely will be missed. Um, but, you know, rest in peace to all of those who we lost this week. They say death comes in threes, but man, we lost four this week. So I'm like, God is ramping up, man. He is ramping up. So... Shout out to, you know, them for their contributions to the entertainment industry. Now, shenanigans. Shenanigans. I, listen, I'm trying to ease y'all back up this week, okay? Listen, shenanigans. Now, last week, matter of fact, no, I didn't even get a chance to talk about this last week. So, last week, I kind of mentioned um, Tyrese. Tyrese had did his interview with the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast. But this week, as I told you, he's on his press run, you know, promoting his newest film. And so, this week, he was on Shannon Sharp's show, Club Shay Shay. Club Shay Shay. Now, great episode. I love me some Shane and Sharp. I love Club Shay Shay. Like, I that's one of the podcasts that I frequent on a regular basis because I don't know. I just love it. Like, I love who he is as a person. You know, he just it, it, he does something for me. But apparently, he does something for Michelle as well. <laughs> if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, Mr. Shannon Sharp. Now, I, I heard of sex tape, video tape, where I could see the action, okay? Celebrities have sex tapes all the time, but they call them Mr. Shannon Sharp's a cassette tape because all we got was the audio, okay? A minute and 20 some odd seconds of him giving everything that he had to Michelle. <laughs> Listen, he gave everything to Michelle. Now everybody wants to know who Michelle is. Now, listen, it's a lot going on with this audio, right? So, this is the story. If y'all don't know what audio I'm talking about, you can find little clips on TikTok. But X, Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, never lets me down. You can find the full audio on Twitter. Now, the story is this. Mr. Shannon Shop claims that he was having an intimate moment with a female. He had his phone in his hand. He goes to throw the phone on the bed, not thinking nothing of it. And somehow, somehow, some way, he goes live on Instagram. Now, those of us of the millennial decade know that it's not that easy to just accidentally go live on Instagram. Like, you have to go through steps. The same way you got it to on TikTok where... You press the button to go live. Then you got to write your little caption or whatever it is. Then you got to press the button again to go live. So, eh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shannon Shop. I'm sorry, Unc. I don't particularly, particularly believe that you press that button by accident. Because now, on the interview with Tyrese, Tyrese gets to um, clown in that orange. Uh, I want to say... Was it a Birkin? I think it was a Birkin. Listen, because Birkins ain't cheap. So, I listen, 
Hey, I don't talk about problems that ain't in my in my tax bracket, okay? A Birkin ain't in my tax bracket, so I, I'm I'm gonna tread lightly. But remember, he went viral with that green outfit on, and he had that orange Birkin bag across him, and everybody was eating him up, basically alleging that he was looking a little zesty. Now, my personal beliefs. This, I mean, this is not what Unk is telling us, but my personal beliefs is that Mr. Shannon Sharp must have got tired of y'all calling him Zesty, and he wanted to show y'all he bought that life. We got a minute and a half of that's my Michelle. Ugh. <laughs> we got all the sounds. And, um, I don't know. Listen, I don't know which audio was more disturbing. Matter of fact, yes, I do. Between hearing Shannon Sharp go to work or hearing Diddy and uh, Meek Mill go to work. Hey, both of them very quite traumatizing. Some of the girlies are, um, you know, enamored, eating it up. Because they like, oh, I love a man that can talk you through it. <laughs> hey, they said the old heads know what they doing. Listen, I, look, I don't know. I'm not, I, listen, if I could be a fly on the wall, I would. But now, even though I believe that this video or this audio was leaked to clear up those allegations of him being a little zesty, others are still like, hmm, was Michelle a dude? Clock that T. <laughs> clock that tea because we know there can be men named Michelle that's very much a French thing and they pulled these pictures up of this man sitting courtside with Unc several times listen what that man do in the personal space of his own bedroom ain't got nothing to do with me if Eddie Winslow out here doing what he doing and sneaking and geeking and doing things he doing hey we in 2024 Whatever floats your bunk, bunk, <laughs> yeah, not your bunk, floats your boat, uh, that's, that's up to you. But if y'all heard that audio, what y'all thinking? What y'all thinking? Because I feel like Unc was giving you the best of me <laughs> for about a, hour, for about a minute and 30 seconds. He had, he gave it all he had. He said, that's my Michelle. So now everybody want to be Michelle. You want to be Michelle? Let me know in the chat. Now. On to more spill the tea topics, okay? We know. We haven't, listen, we haven't heard much about Diddy. We haven't heard much about him um, since, you know, the video came out with him having his um, domestic situation with ex-girlfriend Cassie, which was a very terrible situation. Um, you know, we know since then, you know, he has stepped down from the board of several companies. He has no longer been affiliated with a lot of different things because um, they pull him back on him and they don't want to, you know, have to deal with the grunt of what's going on with these allegations. A lot of people are coming out saying that something happened. They have encountered something. They have experienced something when it came to Diddy. That's why I don't believe all these people talking about, oh, I was there, but I ain't seen nothing. Because he, this man has a history. We always joke about in the black community how, you know, every act that he's ever had or any person that he ever had a part in their career, they either one, are unalived, dead, or two, they no longer make music. They have not, they had a successful run and then it just seemingly their careers fell off. Now he has a huge track record of this, you know, most popularly uh, making the band. He had how many seasons of making the band? So he first came out with the band that had, you know, Freddie P. Um, what was his name? Ness, Dylan, Dylan, and Dylan, Bab, Sarah. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Hopefully y'all old enough. Um, then you know we got our run with Danity Kane, one of the most amazing girl groups of our generation. Then you got our run with Day 26. Now, what's crazy to me is a lot of people don't remember Day 26, but I'm like, dang. Like, to me, Day 26 was popping. They popped then. They pop now. But D and B5, 
we got all these groups where Diddy had some type of hand in breaking them into the industry, but they're no longer making music at the moment, or they took a long hiatus, and then now they're getting back to it. So there was a situation, and before I get to the new news, I'm just going to recap on some of the things that are coming out of the Woodworks right now. So Freddie P, he was one of the rappers from the band. Freddie P is now coming out, speaking out about how disrespected he felt by Diddy in a couple of situations. He details a situation where he was in the studio. He said he was in the studio and um, Diddy basically threatened his life. He was in the studio one day. He said he was in there, you know, hungry, ready, working. He said he didn't want to deal with none of the foolishness. He in there doing what he came to do. So now, um, in 2024, he kept, comes on uh, the Art of Dialogue and basically discussed the day that things went too far and when he decided that he was no longer going to be a part of the band. So he said, one day I was waking up, I was in a mood, I'm in the studio, I'm snapping or whatever. I didn't even want to be effed with. You know, when you around a bunch of goofies and you a street ninja, sometimes you don't want to be around the nerds. So I'm in that, man. I'm just frustrated with a lot of shit going on. And then he reveals that Diddy got, him and Diddy got into a situation. He said, we in, in front of everybody. Like, man, what you think you bought? He said, this is what Diddy said. Man, what you think you bought it or something? He was like, Ninja, I'll buy every house on your block. Shut every light off in that bitch. And every time you come out that bitch, you'll get popped. When he tell you some shit like that, you got to picture him purchasing every house. You going to picture every light going off and silence me. And he said that that was the incident that led him leaving the band. And led him to thoughts of off and Diddy. So, personally, that sounds realistic. We know, listen, Brother Love, okay, 2020 and beyond Diddy is a totally different Diddy than the 90s Diddy. 90s Diddy was way more braggadocious, way more cocky, way more just out there. So, I believe that he pulled his hand and tried to show his and flex his power. I believe that he told that man that. And I respect that man for, for walking away from what was seemingly his big shot to save his self-respect. Because that man shouldn't be playing God and trying to make people feel like they need him like that. So we got that allegation. Now, fast forward. And that was earlier this year. Now in September, just a couple of days ago, Dawn Richards from Danity Kane, and then she also later moved on to be a part of Diddy Dirty Money, basically said that the mogul subjected her to years of verbal and physical abuse. Uh, she's suing her former collaborator. Um, and she filed a lawsuit a couple of days ago, September 10th. And a New York federal court. She details her history with Diddy dating back to the early 2000s when she was on Making the Band. And um, basically saying during the auditions, Diddy spoke to the female contestants in a very hostile, condescending manner, making disparaging gender remarks such as calling them fat, ugly bees, and hoes. Um, and she felt threatened and intimidated by Mr. Combs' blatant disdain for women. Um, and basically what it sounds like is even though she felt that way, like you got to think about this. Cause a lot of times people are like, Oh, well she benefited da 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 da. Now she want to say something, but you really got to think about this though. When people are like, and I think the music industry preys on people in this way, because you got to see people like, like, and I'm not going to take no, nothing away from Scarlet, but people like Scarlet who blow up overnight and they change their situation in an instance, like they almost playing God. And so I think the music industry preys on people who have bad situations and hope that they can flash a little money, flash a little dime in front of them. And these people will turn a blind eye or whatever the case may be. And so I believe that that's probably what happened in the situation where her situation, she was just hungry. She wanted to be put on 
And she chose her battle at that time. And I think it's okay that people feel a certain type of way in those moments. And and I think that their feelings are still valid, even though they chose not to say something in that moment. Because we can't say that we sh- a person should have reacted a certain type of way. It, we're not them. Everybody's going to act differently. And so she said that uh, once Danity Kane dismembered, not dismembered, disbanded in 2009... Um, she experienced financial hardship, and so she continued to work with Diddy in his house restor- recording studio, and she said without pay or an allocated budget. And she said that Diddy promised her that um, her compositions would result in payment of license fees, royalties, um, and all types of other things, but basically saying that he never paid her. He promised her all these different things, but never paid her. She also details the fact that while she was in that studio setting, that she also witnessed some of the things that was going on between Diddy and his then girlfriend, Cassie. And she's one of the ones that, one of the the, the few who say that they actually experienced that. Uh, then it says that, you know... Yeah, during that last album, Last Train to Paris, is when she witnessed Diddy threatening Cassie, abusing her verbally, making her work nonstop. Um, and then he often exhibited uncontrollable anger during his sessions, throwing objects like albums, laptops, food against the wall. Um, and furthermore, she just claims that she was never paid. And so the list goes on and on and on about all these different things that she details during her time with Diddy. And I believe them all. I believe them all. Listen, stand by black women. I believe that he did did what she said he did. We got to listen, go back and roll the tapes back in the 90s. We going, you see, because I think that's what it is. A lot of people probably forget who he used to be because of now who he is today. But that man was something back then. Now, fast forward. Concurrently going on with this situation with Don Richards, they, uh, the there's a fancy Miami hotel that Diddy frequented during a period of time. During um, that time, he was with his ex-girlfriend, Daphne Joy, who was also 50 Cent's baby mom. Now, um, apparently they're subpoenaed, the the hotel is being subpoenaed to gain access to, uh, the records as far as like, you know, because apparently he was here often. They're trying to get the records of how many times he was there, when he checked in, when he checked out. They're trying to get receipts. They're trying to get video footage. they just basically trying to put together some type of timeline of what was going on in this hotel. Because um, now in the past, there's been a situation with Daphne Joy where, you know, her and 50 Cent got into it publicly because he basically said that she was prostituting and doing different things with Diddy, da 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 And that's how she's involved with the situation now. And so now the door these are basically um an ongoing investigation surrounding the sexual assault and trafficking accusations um and they're trying to they're trying to put it together listen they breadcrumbing at this moment they trying to figure out what was going on and they trying to establish some type of pattern so more to come on that. Listen, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more things. Now that this hotel has been subpoenaed, if this was his home base for all the different little slutty activities that he was doing, we're going to see something. We're going to see something on the cameras. So more to come. Now, it's time for Conspiracy Talk. <laughs> so... It's time for Conspiracy Talk. Y'all know I love me a good conspiracy. This one may not be as long as any of the others that um, I've talked about in the past. But, of course, TikTok, scrolling, 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 I came across something. Now, we all know the famous Colonel Sanders, the uh, person who founded KFC. Um, some of, you know, some people like KFC, some people don't. But um, we can't say that KFC is not consistent. It always tastes the same. As long as it's fresh, it's good to go with me. But the conspiracy is this. Was Colonel Sanders actually an Asian man? Some say he was. We all seen the pictures on the, uh, you know, the logo on the product. 
on the different billboards, on the cups, the this, the that. And a lot of us, you know, just assumed that he was a nice, you know, nice, cute little old white man. But TikTok seems to think otherwise. TikTok seems to think that he might be a little Asian because when you see some of the pictures of what he actually looked like outside of that cartoonized version of him, he does have a little bit more of a chinkier eye. Some people were like, was he Asian? Is that why the chicken's so good? Because he was Asian and he was seasoning that joint up? I don't know. But there's no proof of him being Asian. There's no, you know, recollection of who his parents were or nothing like that. Um, personally, I'm going to say that he absolutely, like, because there's some things where they show like a timeline of what he looked like over the years. And I will say that he looks like he very much could have had some type of Vietnamese or something in him. But who knows? Conspiracy or not? Were we led to believe that this man was white? Was he actually white? And if you know, drop the answer down into the chat. Now, before I let y'all go tonight, I'm going to go ahead and give somebody their props. I haven't given somebody their props in a long time. And uh, y'all better chill on me. I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all better chill on me. Because y'all be having a lot to say about a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you what. You better put some respect on this man's name. Because I'm going to ride for him. I'm going to stand beside him. I'm giving props to Mr. Bow Wow. <laughs> The reason why I want to give some props to Bow Wow this week is because he recently performed at the Love I, I Love R and B Fest in Grand Park, Los Angeles, um, and he went viral because he was uh, on stage. He comes out and like you starts playing. I ain't never had nobody show me all the things that you know me when, uh, the way I feel when you hold me. We gon' always be together, baby. That's what you told me, and I believe you. Cause I ain't never had nobody do me like you. Now I done been with different types of girls. That I done seen them all, but ain't none of them at all like you. <laughs> Listen, I told y'all a long time ago. I, I remember. I put up. Listen, I've been riding for my guy for a minute. I told y'all a long time ago, y'all better put some respect on Bow Wow because y'all be trying to act like Bow Wow ain't that guy. I wanted to give him his props because Bow Wow came on the stage and it's a long, you know, runway type style stage. He comes out, he engages the crowd, he sits the microphone down and the crowd just sings the whole entire song. Hey, say what you want. Not many people have bops like that where people can just walk away from the microphone and trust that the crowd is going to do what the crowd is supposed to do. The crowd understood the assignment because they ain't leave my boy out there hanging. Okay? Listen, he got a track list. He got like you. Let me hold you. Then he got... When I'm all alone, that's all I want to do. Text Molly's faces in my sidekick. Uh, 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 out of my system. You don't know what you do to me. <laughs> then he got, you ain't balling like I'm balling. You ain't fresh as I made. You ain't big, big whipping. You ain't steady tip, tip it. Okay? Listen. Then he got, of course he got, listen. I'm not going to go through his whole catalog because, Bow Wow have been in the game since he was a little boy. Little boy. To this day, I still got his first album. I, listen, I'm telling my age. Got his first CD in my car. Okay? That first album was on repeat. This was back when we used to make up dances at the sleepover. We had dances. Okay? I'm just going to say, he is who he is. Put some respect on him. Then you can't, it's something to say about Bow Wow. Like y'all like the clown Bow Wow. I don't know why y'all like the clown Bow Wow, but Bow Wow, he proves himself time and time again. Okay. Not only is this man a musician and he has a catalog. Okay. He has memorable songs. He may not be a lyricist. He may not be K-Dot. He may not be J. Cole, but he damn sure ain't designer. I said it. I don't give a damn. <laughs> he damn sure ain't Kodak Black. He damn sure ain't none of these new rappers that don't be rapping on the beat. Okay? Hey, I said what I said. 
He has a catalog. Not only is he a rapper, but this man is one of the few people who went from rap or not even went from, because I believe it was a simultaneous journey where he was rapping, then he became an actor, then he became a television host. I mean, this man has a catalog like Mike, Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, Lottery Ticket, Roll Bounce, Johnson Family Vacation, Medea's Big Happily Fa- Happy Family, All About the Benjamins. I mean, Carmen. Carmen, listen. If you know, you know, okay? Carmen, the hip hopper, that was Beyonce's, one of Beyonce's first films. I love it. This man has hosted 106 in Park. He done been on CSI. Listen, I just want to give this man his props, okay? I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. Listen, if you got a problem with what this man is doing, if you think he a clown, you do it. It's always the people that don't want to, that they ain't doing nothing. They ain't pulling no numbers on social media. They want to be talking about this man. So give this man his props while he's still here. Because he gave us some timeless bops, okay? And I dare you, I dare you sit here and act like you don't know the words to the song. I ain't never had nobody show me all the things that you didn't show me in the special way I feel when you hold me. We gon' always be together, baby. That's what you told me. And I believe it because I ain't never had nobody do me like you. Okay? Listen, I had to get that out my system. <laughs> I dare you. Now, that was a good episode, okay? I appreciate y'all for tuning in with your girl. I appreciate it even more. If you haven't subscribed to this video, you go ahead and click that red button. That button, make it turn red down at the bottom that says subscribe. And help your sister on the road to 200 subscribers. I hope you help me by sharing. Listen, click the little arrow, John, and share it to a friend. Share it to the text message. Share it to the group chat. Share it to the Facebook. Help your sister. Listen, help me. Nigga! <laughs> it's like, no. Nah. But no, thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that first part of this episode. I hope something that I say in this first per- part of this episode really helps somebody because y- if y'all know me, y'all know that my testimony is always to help somebody else because it's always somebody out there that's going through something either the same level what I'm going through or something worse. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on all social platforms. For, uh, all social platforms at Gold Chain underscore underscore Diva. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night.